All right, yep, we're recording. <laughs> this is just a sort of a quick video. Um, what we're looking at here is the um, LMS Express Passenger train electric train set by Hornby Railways. Uh, manufacturing date 1978-1979. My production is the 1979 production. If I, if you just bear with me a sec, the, it's a sort of reasonable condition. I mean, the polystyrene tray it hasn't got. Usually, you get loads of marks where the tracks laid and the wires from the controller. But I've done that. I've put elastic band around the controller. I recommend any of you guys, if you like your retro train sets or whatever, you want to keep them in perfectly good condition, please wrap up your uh, wires. Keep them away from the bodies of the locos and away from the polystyrene because the material that's made, what well, the, the wires made out of and the material that the polystyrene is made of it reacts that's why he it looks like there's loads of glue marks on the wires but it's not it's the reaction between the two plastics and again if you leave wires across the bodywork of your models it it will melt it and i have seen this i've seen this lots of times so trust me wrap them up keep them out of the way i mean this box this polystyrene box is in really good condition. The loco's out because I'm working on that. Um, this is in immaculate condition. And this is one of my birthday presents. <laughs> yeah. The set is complete. Yeah. The, the, all the track is there. I probably need to give it a little bit more of a clean. But other than that, everything's there. All the components, the signals, the level crossing, even the level crossing, if you look in there, it's still, they still haven't been attached. The, uh, basically the red dots are still on the cellophane, they still haven't been attached. You can see them in there, they're still. <laughs> so this set is Macler. It was stored in the loft, I think they run the loco and that was about it. I think they added some extra track because I had extra track with this as well, so. Um, right, I was rubbing it on again. I have to be careful. The cellophane has come detached, I'm afraid, but at least it's there. It was in dirty, it was quite dirty and I uh, polished it up basically and removed all the grime. Uh, if I turn, the box is in reasonable condition, but the bit that I want to draw your attention to is the R number, R791, which places this production as a 1979 uh, set. So if I, you see, even got the original price on it. If I turn, yes, it's immaculate, look at that. Oh, look, yeah. Original price, uh, £46.26p. So it's still got the original price. And I do have another one of these <laughs> that has the same price on it. <laughs> but the box is in a bit of a terrible condition and I'm refurbing that one to sell on. So, yeah, this one is in immaculate. This is my birthday present. So, the other one I've got the box isn't in good condition it's still a 79 production but the box isn't in good condition the back in back bit is but the it's missing some of the the sides and the outer and the mod the duchess of sutherland that's in that set has a zero one decoder in it <laughs> yeah. and i need to do a lot of work it's in terror it's in quite terrible state so I need to do a lot of work to it this one I'm basically just uh, cleaning up uh, the loco the, the wheels have had to clean and oiled and everything else everything's I've gone through it and everything's all, all in spick and span order I, basically from what I was told 
the owner had it he's used it a couple of times basically set the track run the loco and the rolling stock and it was stored in the loft for a while so yeah it's in really i've got paperwork with it as well <laughs> yeah uh and the record as well bernard cribbins record yes right let's go i'll, I'll move on let me pause the video a bit right welcome back um Basically, we're in the <laughs> temporary workbench area, <laughs> i.e., a.k.a. the kitchen. <laughs> yes, I oh, don't have my washing machines there. Um, basically, I strip down my older models and I work on them. I clean them up. I clean... I, I strip it down to the bears. So, basically, there's the chassis. I'm just going to clean that out. I've got my manky brush. I'm going to clean it out with some uh, impact cleaner. Don't use the normal WD-40 on these models. This is okay with plastics and rubbers and everything else. And it's just a cleaner. It evaporates. I also use um, lighter fluid and everything else and clean up the wheels which i got to do the wheel set is there um i've taken the uh brass insert out for the bulb it does come with a bulb so i will clean all that up clean the body the body's in yeah the body's in really good condition it's not i can't it's not much dust on it so it just needs a quick spruce up and then repurposing basically and ignore the festive treat it is coming towards christmas and basically these are here to <laughs> keep me fueled um yes uh, cotton buds uh every modeler's uh tour of choice put the uh, cotton buds i can't i can't do without them they're, they're, they're brilliant they clean up the wheels and everything um and obviously clean out all the gunk and obviously i've got to clean up the armature i clean up the armature i take it apart strip it down and then i clean it out with the uh, impact cleaner and then i let that evaporate and then i i polish it with tea cut just a little bit on the cotton bud and polish it all up and make it all spick and span that's what i do I completely, like I said, I completely strip my models and this is what I enjoy doing. I get hours of fun. This model did not work when I got it. I've stripped, well, I, I haven't completely serviced that, but I, I know that that works. Struggling a bit, but the old 9 volt battery test on the old terminals of the uh, Ringfield motor, so I know that she works. I just need to make sure the whole lot works. The wheels are quite stiff, so that's why they're all separated and uh, I can clean out the slots. I'm afraid these don't have uh, brass bearings in. And that would have been a lot better. I do prefer some older Hornby models, Hornby Railways models do have brass bearings. A lot of them do. And I'm grateful that Hornby railways introduced that at an early time it is a lot better instead of putting them in the slots because basically it will wear it's a as a moving part you have to keep that lubricated so it doesn't wear out as much but i am very much in favor of brass bearings uh there's another model i'm working on which is a king class uh similar vintage similar age 1978 onwards I think my 179 model i think that's what my one is and that comes with a big set which i hopefully i can't wait to bring to you guys and i'll review and you'll see it it's a rather massive set and i have discussed it but this is my birthday present this is i've only well i got it in november and i've been working slowly through it so i've got a lot of work to do my workbench is basically i'm using the kitchen i need a proper workbench i can't i am using the dining room table but isn't i don't want to ruin the table you see so a lot of the dirty work gets done out here and uh, i put my 
uh, Matt, oh, I've hidden it behind my daughter's kitchen. My daughter's kitchen. Basically, that's my working mat. And I use that to do, I've got one, a clean one and a dirty one. The dirty one I use for a lot of soldering and gluing and everything else on it. And the, that one I use for like assembly purposes. I'll have my local cradle. I have a few cradles. I use the knock ones mainly because it keeps all the components together. And basically I use that. they got like I got a dirty one and I got a clean one. I know it sounds funny to you guys, but obviously the dirty one doesn't matter if I get manky and I get oil and because it doesn't matter. But a few of them I have that are pristine, so I don't get any oily marks on pristine models. But in the dirty stage, I use that, so it keeps everything together. I can work on it. That's how I work. And I will bring some surfacing videos to you. This is just a quick overview, as it were, when I do work on models. When I get them in, especially old, mo yeah, old models, vintage models, I strip them down. Now I've got Hornby 00 models as well, trying railways, and obviously Hornby railways, which this is. And I have shown you a few of my sets. Basically, when they come in to me, depending on the condition, I strip them and I clean them up and I get them to work exactly how I want them to. And that's what I enjoy doing. Obviously, you come over here and the kitchen is a bit of a mess. Cause rotary tool and parts of my toolbox, track rubbers, uh, Pico wheel cleaner. I've got a couple of these as well wire brush, oiling pens, all sorts, old track rubbers I've got in there. Back to back gauge. Now I've got a few of these and I highly recommend these. It basically it gives you the back to back distance so you don't want any trouble on the track. Also I've got a track gauge as well. But they're mainly used for people that basically scratch build track which I've been watching a lot of videos and watching a lot of people do. <laughs> um, another part of my toolbox from so I use cocktail sticks to clean in between segments of the armature so and I use cocktail sticks for a lot to remove dirt and grit yeah um, lighter fluid very handy to have um, wire strippers, solder, solder sucker, because obviously I've got salt and solders there. Um, I've got some flux, but I'm not using that at the moment. Um, what else have we got? We've got some lube case, lubes. Let's move that. I think that's traction tires I got in there. Yeah, hobby lube. So all, all different uh, lubes. I, I do use other lubricate lubricants. Um, I think it's Model Railways Unlimited introduced me to some other lubricants that he uses. So, I, I lapel, I think it's oh, I'm trying to remember the lubricant name. Yeah, I use that uh, sandpaper for obviously getting um, when I work on X on four motors. You've got the clip that goes in between the brushes, I clean, clean that out to make good contact tweezers as well. Some of my tweezers. I've got different types. This one's a, like you squeeze it together and it locks, holds. I've got different types of tweezer in there. All sorts. Um, I think you've got a track gauge in there. Yeah, I've Pico track gauge. <laughs> oh dear. Uh, pipe cleaner, different variants in sizes. Uh, some of my pliers and grippers. I got some cutters in there. I got all sorts. You know, pico lube in there as well. Electro lube. Yep. All sorts. What else? Have I got? I have a toolbox. You probably haven't seen it. Sticking decoders down. and use these. <laughs> um, what else? Yeah, 
precision hand drill. I've got a few different variants of hand drills. Files. Yeah, I've got some of that. Like files. There's an old lead for a controller. Obviously, I, I keep everything. Because I could use this for something else. I can use this on another controller that I've taken apart. Um, I've got various, various sizes. These are the main ones I use. But I got I do have different sizes. I've got small, a lot smaller watchmakers um, screwdriver set, basically. <clears throat> Where would you be without Xeron uh, track cutters? Yes, very handy. I have a couple of pairs of them. I haven't used that yet. I think yeah, there's a newer one. I've got Tamiya Craft Tool as a scriber. And obviously when I'm using, because uh, I, I want to get into uh, scratch building and that, I've got some other kit, uh, tools for scratch building, because I'm reading a lot of books about it at the moment. So I can build Evergreach Junction, <laughs> build Evergreach Station. Oh. Ah. Some files. I've got different size files. I'm going to start slowly unpacking my tool. I, I, I don't know, it's where I've mixed up some glue. I, I, I keep that plastic. These nut spinners. Um, yeah, crank pin spinners. Yes. Well, I've got, I, can't, I don't really want to unpack everything else. I've got some Gauge Master... Um, wheel cleaning units uh, like a block and you just stick it on the track and you stick the loco on, on I've probably shown that on my channel before and some flux in there all sorts and some syringes model filler yeah so when I'm building repairing body work as well I use a lot of filler basically this is my portable kit <laughs> so that's what I work from and obviously you can't be anywhere about any bit of blue roll yeah and you've got plenty of that as well right my kitchen yes so right just a quick video showing you what I get up to um, so I'll crack on with this clean her all up put her all back together and hopefully I'll bring an, an a review video of this set and we'll see it running I'll put all the accessories out and everything else and we'll we'll have some fun yeah so this is yeah my birthday present basically bring it all back to life get it all working how it was everything's all lubed so I know everything's in working condition and I know the models in tip-top condition and it'll, it'll run exactly how I want it to run that's exactly how I like it so yeah I will bring a better video. I'll probably mount the uh, camera on a tripod and I'll do some uh, repair videos. I've got a few locos that are at the stage where basically I'll strip them down. Some of them are really, really horrible condition. I mean, the mechanisms are all gunked up with hair. A lot of, yeah, that's a lot of thing I find is hair gunked up. So you, when you turn the wheels, they're so stiff they won't turn. Because it was all gunked up with hair and lubricant that's basically gone like gl like glue, basically. Right. Now, this isn't in too bad condition, actually. It's not... It's, I've just stripped this and it's I haven't even used any cleaner on it yet. It's in really good condition. So, yeah. Let me get this back together and uh, I look forward to bringing a nice review of this set. Thank you for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. <laughs> Cheers.